Okay, now I want you to know finding absolute maximums and minimums are, are pretty easy. Okay. Uh, just taking this back a little bit, uh, Rose theorem showed us how when you had a graph such like, sorry, such as this one, where the uh, two y values are the same, then there's at least one point where the uh, there's a slope in between that's zero. Okay, and in this graph you see it. It's right here. There's the maximum. Let's see now, had it been different where you had a minimum. Like this one, and um, you pick two points with the same y value, there is a point somewhere in between, at least one point, where you have a, a minimum value, meaning a zero slope. Now, if you take this and rotate it like this, okay, and you rotate it, the same thing applies. How could you think? Excuse me. The same thing applies. Okay, you can rotate the whole thing. Now, what this means is, let me copy this onto this page. And uh, what this means is if you get the uh, y value, now let's change the coordinate system where it's vertical like this. Okay, now if you have two y values that are not the same, you have at least one point in between on the graph. Is the slope of the secant line between the two points that are not equal, two y points that are not equal. You have at least one point in between, which is here, where if you find the slope, you'll have a slope that's equal to the secant line two points on a graph that are not the same y value, that are not the same y point. Okay. That's the mean value theorem. Here is Rolle's theorem where you have uh, two points at the same y value, the same y value, okay. and uh, there's at least one point in between where it's zero. Okay. You cannot draw a graph where there's at least one point that's not zero. So that's the that's Rolle's theorem. Okay. You have two points two y values that are the same, there's at least one point where if you take the, the derivative of that function, okay, the derivative is going to be zero. At least one point. And that point is c. Okay. And here, you have to use the slope of the secant line, okay, which is what was used here. What does that mean to what we're doing? Well, we're using derivatives to find minimums and maximums in our classwork that we're doing right now. Okay, so we're just finding where is the slope zero? That tells you there's either a minimum or a maximum. Okay. Now you have to test the endpoints too. If you look at these endpoints, they include the endpoints. These endpoints could be larger or smaller than the minimum or maximum. Okay. So you have to include the endpoints when you're looking for which is the highest point, which is the lowest point. So example one tells, uh, shows us a function that's a parabola. Okay. And we need to find the maximum and the minimum of this area. We have to include negative one, okay? We have to include all sorry, we have to include all the x value. And we also have to include everywhere in between, which would be a minimum or a maximum. For instance, the graph of this looks something similar to this right here. Okay. Something like this. Okay. Let me fix this. Okay, that's more like it. Here's negative one. So we need to check and x equals 5, somewhere around here, okay, not quite in between. Okay, we need to check where the maximum and minimum, what's the highest value, what's the lowest value. You can already see the lowest value is here. Now, based on the picture, you can tell this is the highest point, you can tell this is the lowest point. What's the y value at these points, okay? So to find the y value at 1, you just plug it into the equation, what's the y value, okay? We need to find out what this x value is. Where is the slope zero? So that's where you need to find where f prime of x equals zero. Okay. So set it up. Okay, so here's f prime of x, okay? And set it equal to zero. So just solve for x now. So just add 24 to both sides, divide by 6, and now we have the x value. That's our minimum value. Okay? Now we know, we know that's uh, at x equals 4, but what, what is the actual value is the y value. We're looking for the y value. What is the y value? Sorry, we know where the y value is. Okay. We need to find out what the y value is. It's at x equals 6. What is f of x? What is f of, f of 4? Sorry, not 6. What is f of 4? Just plug it into the original equation. Okay, so plugging it into the original equation, you get negative 49 for f of 4. Now, on the exam, you don't have the benefit of the actual graph. So now, now that you know where there's a possible max or min, 
Right? Now you just plug in the endpoints. So what you'll be doing is plugging into f of negative 1, giving us positive 26, and f of the other endpoint, which is f of 5, which is negative 46. So let's compare the max, um, where the slope equals 0, which is either max or min, and um, the two endpoints. As you can see, this is the lowest. This is your absolute minimum value, and here is your absolute maximum value. And if you haven't noticed, um, then the graph was a little bit off, okay? That point on the very right-hand portion should have been a little bit more to the left, below the x-axis, where y equals negative 46. But those are your answers. And that's a sufficient way to show f of 4 equals negative 49. That is our absolute min, the y value, okay? And f of 1, 26, absolute max, the y value is the absolute max. Okay, find the max of n, do the same setup. Find your derivative where it's equal to 0. And there's f prime equal to 0. Solve for x. Factor out an x squared. Uh, actually, factor out a 6x squared. Okay, so here you're going to have two values uh, where, where the slope is going to be equal to 0, where the derivative is going to be equal to 0. Meaning, if I make this equal to 0, this, the other side will be, uh, this will be equal to, uh, set this equal to 0. Okay? Also, if you do the same thing with the reverse, if this was equal to 0, then you can set this equal to 0. Okay, so you got to do each one of them. 6x squared, when it's equal to 0, everything will be equal to 0. If 3x minus, if 3 minus 4x is equal to 0, um, everything else would be equal to 0. So divide by 6, okay, square root the x, okay, x equals 0. Add the 4x, okay, add 4x, sorry, Okay. 3 equals 4x, divide by 4. So here are your two places where your derivatives, your derivative is going to be equal to 0. x equals 0 and x equals 3 fourths. So now set up the, the endpoints and the two portions of the graph right here. These x values equal to, um, into the original function to see which one's the highest, the max, and which one's the lowest, the min. So just plug them in. Uh, determine which one your highest and your lowest function is. Which is, which is the bottom two, and then go ahead and write your answer down here just like that. Okay. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and do C and D, um, and that way you can attack the homework problems. Get your derivative equal to zero. Okay. Notice the three there is cancel. And then I brought this to the numerator. This is on the denominator, sorry. This is the denominator, this is the numerator, and I brought two to the other side, and we have the line below. Multiply each side by x to the one third, and then divide by two, divide by two. This reduces to one, and we have one equals x to the one third. Raise it to the third, both sides, and you have one equals x. You have one equals x, and then you have x equals negative 1, your endpoints, x equals 8, the other endpoint, and then just plug in, see which one's the largest, see which one's the smallest, and write down your answer. Okay, there's your answer. Plug in, find the largest, absolute max, find the smallest, that's your absolute max. Okay, here's our last problem. Go ahead and find the derivative, f prime of x equals 0. There's your derivative. Okay. Now, factoring always helps. And then we have a a sign in common for each one. Okay. After you factor it out, you have two possibilities. Sine of x equals 0, 2 sine, of x, 2 cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. And uh, if you look, where will sine of x give you 0? Okay. The y value, we're looking for y values here. The y value here is 0. Okay. And where else is the y value 0? Not here, not there, not there. Right here. So at 0, and pi. Okay. So, x equals 0, x equals pi. Now, where is 2 cosine of 1 going to equal to 0? Okay, so let's isolate this x and you okay, add the 1s to both sides, divide by 2 to both sides. That leaves you with cosine of x equals 1 half. Now, where does the x value on the unit circle leave you with 1 half? Okay, right there. And yes, you do have to memorize this. 
Okay, not here. Those are negatives all the way down to the fourth quadrant right there. Okay, so we have 5 over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So those are your points. They include the endpoints, okay, 0 and 2 pi. And uh, just plugging in, and these are your answers. Okay, and those are your y values. Now, uh, I didn't show work for uh, 2 pi because it's the same as uh, 0, okay. 0 and 2 pi are at the same place, so you get the same answer. And uh, as you can see, your answer ends up being that. Now, if you look at 5 pi over 3 and uh, pi over 3, it's the same value, so I set them equal to each other because they are equal, and those two share a common uh, value of uh, the maximum, to share a common maximum value. All right, and uh, get that homework done. It's due tomorrow, and uh, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions through the text messages or through the uh, Google Classroom. Thank you.